It's 10 p.m. in Banjul, and from our studios on MDI Road, this is the news for the headlines. Keeping with tradition, Operation Save the Children's Foundation, spearheaded by First Lady Madam Zainab Yayajame, presents a hefty financial package and gives to the New Year babies. Trafficking in persons or modern day slavery under the spotlight as officials work towards sensitizing the people to be extra vigilant. Ukraine looks set to take advantage of a new comprehensive free trade agreement with the European Union, but Russia is not moved. And investigators try to dig deep into the circumstances leading to the cause of a blaze at a luxury hotel in Dubai on New Year's Eve. Well, viewers, those are your headlines with me, Winifred Nicole. Thanks for joining us once again. New Year, new concepts or new ideas. This is what 2016 has come with. For many families, the burden of spending huge sums of money to handle one's naming ceremony or buy clothes for mom and baby is no longer a challenge. Thanks to the new changes added to the initiative. The Operation Save the Children's Foundation, spearheaded by First Lady Madam Zainab Yayajame, has decided to present gifts to babies delivered in the early hours of the new year. Beginning in Banjul at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, Umijal tells us more on how the presentation was conducted. These women look joyful. They are the mothers of the first two born at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. After all the hurdles in the nine months period of pregnancy, they safely put to bed bouncing baby boys. They are happy but equally lucky. The fact that each of the babies receives a scarce amount of over $20,000 and some hefty gift, courtesy of the First Lady, Her Excellency, Madam Zainab Jami. Her Excellency, the First Lady, for the first time decided to welcome the babies nationwide. And um, the whole of ni last night, I'm sure she did not sleep, waiting for the babies to be delivered. <laughs> we have all the babies in all the hospitals and uh, Farah Fenye, uh, Buyam, Jami Foundation for Peace, Sadakuna General Hospital. Her Excellency, the Vice President, is presenting the gifts and GT Bank is there, Gamtel is there, on her behalf. The Managing Director of Gamtel thanked the First Lady for the worthy cause and said his institution will always stand firm to do their corporate social responsibility. Gamtel Gamsel also believes that when you support a baby, you have supported humanity, for the baby is the foundation of mankind. We've been very proud to be associated with this occasion and we believe it is part of our corporate social responsibility and doing it is as if we are giving back to our esteemed customers. The Guarantee Trust Bank has provided the first babies with a savings account of $10,000 and the bank's managing director affirmed their readiness to support the First Ladies Operation Save the Children project. As an organization, Guarantee Trust Bank is proud of what we are doing regarding our children. When we were called upon to support this occasion, we were highly proud and delighted to be part of it. So we are highly proud of what you are doing, Ma. And um, we will continue to support you for this noble initiative of yours. The Mayor of Banjul, Abdulaiba, and the Chief Medical Director of the FSTH both expressed appreciation to the efforts of the First Lady and held her generosity towards women and children of the country. Your contribution to the teaching hospital is very, very huge. And actually, uh, we can say that this hospital, particularly the Department of Pediatrics and ONG, have reached to a status of a world-class teaching hospital. So we thank you for this effort. The health minister said the First Lady's intervention in the health sector has saved the lives and livelihoods of many and recounting her many interventions over the past 12 months. Your intervention in 2015 have helped or to save $200 million from our budget that we have to give government to put in other ministries. For the first time, because of your contribution, for the first time we're going to see a proper 
state-of-the-art neonatal unit for, um, for, for, for the newborn. And we want to thank you. Shortly after the presentation, Madam Jame conducted a tour of the neonatal ward of the hospital to acquaint herself with the state of affairs. She expressed satisfaction and thanked the nurses and doctors for keeping the facility in a good condition. This is the first and latest engagement of the Office of the First Lady in 2016, but from the look of things, more life-changing interventions could be on the pipeline. Ominjai, GRTS. At the Sarakunda General Hospital, at least 300,000 Dalasi was distributed between three babies delivered during the early hours of the year. As we hear in this report by Ibrahim Abalde, the mother of the first baby delivered went home with 150,000. 2016 started with a big bang for the mothers and babies delivered during the early hours of the new year. The burden of buying items and provisions for the new babies have been undertaken by the Operation Save the Children's Foundation under the stewardship of First Lady Madam Zainab Yaya Jame. At the maternity ward of the Serekunda General Hospital, the lucky mothers and their new babies are looking healthy and sound. They are part of the new changes adopted by the authorities to decentralize the baby starter package, saving accounts and costs for the first babies of the year and mothers. Having been in the country for seven years, Isa Bangura said the Gambia has naturally been good to her and that she's looking forward to the new year with optimism. She was the mother who delivered the first baby boy at the Serakunda General Hospital and she is now returning home with 150,000 thanks to the Operation Save the Children's Foundation. The mother of the first female second delivery at the Serakunda General Hospital is also going home with $128,000 while the third package of $50,000 was handed to the mother of the third baby. Over the years, the OSCF have partnered with institutions like Gamsel Gamtel, Gandhi Trust Bank, and others to deliver the package. Individuals representing their institutions were at the program to speak about their involvement in the initiative. To our understanding, government sees parastatal oak Institute for Students as its arms of development. That's more of the reason when this uh, initiative came from the First Lady a decade ago, Gamtel Gamtel have been part and parcel of it. We've been associated with it. We've been sponsoring it every year up to now. We share with you the belief that children should be protected from all types of abuses, exploitation, and that is the responsibility on all to ensure children have a good future. As a bank, we will continue to support this kind of initiative. Senior members of the hospital management, Baba Anjai, Ali Ubaji, and Dr. Bekai Kamara, use the opportunity to commend the Operation Save the Children's Foundation for the intervention and appeal for more technical assistance to enable the hospital deliver as expected. The changes to this year's design to the New Year package has been hailed by several institutions and individuals. For the first time, the Kanfi Municipal Council is stepping up to the plate. KMC Mayor Yankubakoli announced KMC has decided to adopt a ward at the Serakuna General Hospital. Minister of Petroleum Sira Walindao used the opportunity to unveil the various cast presentations from the First Lady Madam Zainab Yaya Jame, Gandhi Trust Bank, the Conte family and KMC. Wrapping up this session, the Vice President paid glowing tribute to the First Lady and took time to elaborate on the major interventions of the OSCF. I think really the, the First Lady's initiative is commendable for the simple reason that she helps the most disadvantaged sectors of society. Disadvantaged women, disadvantaged children. Among them, near, newborn babies, premature babies. She also helps, of course, pregnant women. She has also helped differently able people. You've seen it. I think it's there for all of us to see. When we read our papers, when we see the news, and she does it silently. It's just that we cover it, of course, because she's the first lady of the country. So therefore we want to thank her for her efforts, and we want to thank everybody else who has helped to ensure that she realizes her objectives that she has set for her foundation, that is the Operation Save the Children Foundation. What a start to the new year. More than $300,000 have been distributed between three babies born in the early hours of 2016 
at the Seraguna General Hospital. Ibrahim Abalde, GRTS News. A similar program was convened at the Jame Foundation for Peace Hospital, where a number of government officials and ministers gathered to present gifts to the New Year babies. Kerija Tujalo picks up the rest of the story. and financial support to newly born babies at the Jame Foundation for Peace Hospital. The package presented to the first baby boy and girl born on New Year at the hospital comprised a cash amount of more than $20,000 to the baby boy and girl courtesy of the first lady. An additional $10,000 was provided by EcoBank to each of the babies, while $20,000 will be deposited in a savings account, which will be used for their upkeep. Gamtel Gamsel also presented essential materials to the firstborns. The Minister of Basic and Secondary Education prayed for the well-being of the newly born babies, while commending the first lady for spearheading this worthy initiative. She also thanked President Jame for creating the enabling environment for Gambians and non-Gambians alike to enjoy a peaceful and decent living condition in the country. Um, Her Excellency the First Lady is very concerned about the welfare of the women and children of this country. Just um, two days ago, we were at State House at the office of the, Her Excellency the Vice President for the donation of equipment worth two, over $2 million, for the neonatal ward in Banjul, the pediatric ward. And I think that goes to tell the public how passionate Her Excellency the First Lady is about the children, the welfare of the children and the women of this country. A representative of one of the partners of the initiative expressed delight to join such an important initiative, which is headed by the First Lady. Opening the accounts for the babies, he explained it's a long-term investment that they would want to encourage parents in order to create a brighter future for their children. The best thing you can do for your child is to plan for their future. Mm-hmm. It's not for today. And the way the best way you can plan for the, that child's future is to put a savings plan for them. We will start by putting $20,000 for each of these children. And we we'll want to encourage the family members to put something into this account on a monthly basis. If not monthly, but very regular basis. For Gamtel, this move, move forms part of the Taylor Giants' corporate social responsibility. We Gamtel Gamsel believe that when you support a child, you support the foundation of mankind. And uh, that is why we saw this befitting to be associated with <coughs> the initiative of the first child of the year. We believe in social corporate responsibility by giving back to the people that made us what we are today. It was a joyous moment for the families of the beneficiaries and by extension the hospital staff who have been working tirelessly at the hospital. particular occasion uh, will encourage institutional delivery. Mm-hmm. It will encourage because uh, the idea is we want every, every, every delivery to be safe and we want every woman to deliver on, in a safe environment. Mm-hmm. So we want to use this opportunity to so encourage women out that. there, to, to encourage women out there to come and, and use and make best use of our health system. The, one of the major challenges that we are facing is that women don't come out on time to attend antenatal care service. Uminjai, mother of the first baby boy of the hospital, who was said to be the first baby, baby nationally, and Maria Maba, a Guinean national, who gave birth to the first baby girl of the hospital, returned gratitude to the government, as well as the first lady, the foundation and its partners, and the staff of the hospital for the support and package that is expected to impact significantly in their lives and that of their babies, who are the future of the country and the world at large. 
after the presentations, officials reveal a pending package is set aside for the first twins of the year to be born at the Jame Foundation for Peace Hospital. Kadija Tujalo, GRTS News. Deputies at the National Assembly wrapped up the 2015 legislative sessions by reflecting on the advancement made in the socioeconomic status of the citizenry through the adoption of reports and endorsement of the 2016 budget, among others. Louis Mendy reports. The National Assembly wrapped up the 2015 legislative sessions by reflecting on the inroads made in advancing the socioeconomic status of the citizenry through the adoption of reports and the domestication of some legal international instruments, as well as the endorsement of the 2016 budget. Of about five motions. One of these was the 2016 estimates of revenue and expenditure of the Republic of the Gambia, tabled by the Honorable Minister of Finance. We also had a loan agreement between the International Fund for Agricultural Development and the Government of the Republic of the Gambia for the National Agricultural Land and Water Management De Development Project. Honorable Speaker, we also debated the African Union Agenda 2063. The adjournment debate was also a perfect opportunity for lawmakers to bring to the House their constituency priority areas of development that probably fell outside of the national budget. For some NAMs, it is the poor road network, the absence of health facilities, development challenges, they argue, are retarding growth in their areas. It will raise property values, it enhances the environment, and uh, it's good for security and it's good for the vehicles that fly in Banjul. Still now, a lot needs to be done. In the area of water, roads, um, agriculture, that is causeways to our rice fields. The concerns were raised in the presence of the works and health ministers who noted them for future response. We would also want that all of us, we put hands together and discuss and see to it that every year, by the time people are harvesting their grounds, let that be the time that we plan and say, this year's grounds would be, the price of grounds would be this. So that farmers would know, by the time they are harvesting their grounds, each farmer would know that if I have this amount of donkeys, this is what amount of money I am expecting. Or else it is roadside buyers who would just come and buy the ground from the farmers at a controlled price, and at the latter part, the farmer would not get any benefit. The NAMs during the debate also recognized the role of the security personnel in the maintenance of peace and tranquility the country continues to enjoy, a gem they attributed to the visionary leadership of President Jame, propagated by our forefathers. With all honesty, the way and the manners a poor chairmanship is being rotated to me is very undemocratic. But the fact that we know there are, there are qualities of leadership and that we should discourage the ideology of this Francophone Anglophone sentiment in our subregion. Honorable Sonko also spoke of the need for Gambians and those making a fortune on the smiling coast to embrace and respect the monthly cessatel exercise by participating. For the Nam of Combo South, Abdul Koli, government should endeavor to build connecting roads to fish landing sites, citing that of the West Coast settlement of Katong. Louis Mendy, GRTS. Officials of the National Agency Against Trafficking in Persons hit the streets of the Canifin municipality on Wednesday to raise awareness of trafficking in persons, a crime being described as modern-day slavery. Buba SMCC has more in this report. It's a crime that many have fallen victim in many parts of the world, both in developed and developing countries. Hence the scale up of efforts to get people know that trafficking in persons exist. To Lai Jawara Sise, Executive Director, National Agency Against Trafficking in Persons, NATIP, harped on the importance of the sensitization exercise. The purpose of this sensitization work today is to further educate the populace about the ills and consequences of human trafficking. We all know human trafficking is a very topical issue and a criminal offense and it's punishable by law. Um, today NATIP brings sensitization to um, Keraba Avenue all the way down to Westfield and Serakunda Market, down to Bamboo, 
to further educate the populace again on the ills and consequences of human trafficking with particular emphasis on labor migration exploitation. Madam Sise urged the general public to remain vigilant and be alert to the menace, but not without warning those engaged in the serious crime to desist from it, adding her agency is watching them. The native boss outlined the punishment that awaits those found guilty of the crime. The strategies have been put in place. There's a lot of prevention activities. There's partnership with other um, government agencies and non-government agencies. Um, we have investigators investigating cases of human trafficking. So there's quite a few strategies put in place to combat human trafficking. The penalties according to the Trafficking in Persons Act 2007 is 15 years to 50 years to life imprisonment and a fine of $50,000. Basically my message goes out especially to the traffickers. Um, uh, what I want to say to the traffickers is that they should beware. NATIP is watching closely. NATIP is mandated to fight trafficking in persons nationally and we will fight trafficking in persons nationally, regionally and internationally. So traffickers beware. Um, another message to the citizens of the Gambia, especially the women, my message is please beware of the traffickers. Please say no to labor migration exploitation. So Manjai of the Female Lawyers Association, the Gambia, also delves into the gravity of trafficking in persons and made a broad appeal to help stop trafficking in persons. Think before we act. If someone gives us an offer that seems too good to be true, perhaps to make inquiries. Natalie is here. They have a lot of information on people who are currently um, uh, who are currently suspected of such activities and can give great advice. And there's a lot of other agencies, GRTS. There's a lot of people who are now sensitised. The police, uh, the immigration, uh, sort of. Um, and border control. You know, there's a lot of information that you can get out if you are so minded to try and seek that, that information. In more endemic countries, trafficking in persons usually take place across borders. But in some cases, culprits usually do their business out in the open because of little knowledge of the existence of such a serious crime, hence the importance of natives' recent move. Buba SMCC, GRTS. The National Environment Agency recently donated cleaning materials to St. George's Lower Basic School, Sinbase, and Amitage Senior Secondary School. Isa Tujata picks up the rest of that story. The people of Upper River Region and the Central River Region were the latest to benefit from the donation of cleaning materials by the National Environment Agency. This is part of a strategy employed by the agency to further organize communities in taking part in the national cleanup exercise. Ndai Sereba Kuring is the executive director of National Environment Agency. And we must thank the head of the management here at the regional, particularly the governor and his team. And we are always at peace because we know they are doing a good job when it comes to protection of the environment. And that's why whatever we are doing as far as decentralization is concerned, Basse is key. All the regions are important, but sometimes you have to prioritize. And we don't mean the others are not important, but by Basse, because of its strategic location, because of its socioeconomic importance, it must be given a priority. And that's what is important for natural resource management, for the protection of environment, for sustainable development. The Deputy Governor of Upper River Region called on beneficiaries to properly manage the materials and also use them for their intended use. St. George's, you are not the only school in this region. So therefore, this is an opportunity and don't misuse this opportunity. And you should be the sample for all the schools in the region so that the NEA will also be always pleased and proud to contribute more so that our health will continue to increase. The deputy head boy of St. George's Lower Basic School thanked the National Environment Agency for the gesture. The governor of the region assured the officials of the proper utilization of the materials. In URR, I think you hardly heard the deputy governor. 
about the three M's. We have a monitoring team within the TAC. We are not doing it only to create problems. We are doing it to maintain the resources that we are benefiting from our sparing bodies within our allied ministries. The motorcycles are going to be put in good use. We will be monitoring them. We will be supporting them so that they can sustain the motorcycles and achieve the aims and objectives of the NEA and the government at large. A similar presentation was staged in the Central River Region headquarters of Janjambure. Not willing to spoil the special night. New Year Eve revelers in Dubai went ahead with the party, despite the inferno at a luxury hotel in Dubai. And Russia and Ukraine are at, at it again. And find out what happened after the break. Telebakuyate and the Kumari Ban, Nyum Nyo in the Nyari album you best tag. Jump for Jankano, Jump for Jankano, Kumogasia, Animal Atanyoya, Welcome back. A comprehensive free trade agreement has come into force between Ukraine and the European Union. The agreement has so far angered authorities in Russia, who are worried about the close ties between Kiev and its new allies. We have more in this report on how Ukraine is set to gain from this pact. People in Kiev have every reason to welcome the new year. Hopes are high for 2016 thanks to a free trade agreement with the European Union. Western European corporations can now move into the country and Ukrainian products can be sold on new EU markets. In his New Year's address, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko showed optimism. On the 1st of January, there will be a deep and comprehensive free trade area between Ukraine and the European Union. In a few years, we will offset economic losses which Ukraine incurred from Russia. Russia strictly rejects any cooperation between Ukraine and the EU. For now, the Kremlin has suspended its free trade agreement with Ukraine. Russia officially claims Ukraine could provide access to the Russian market for unwanted European products. Despite the warnings and the continuing blaze, revelers near the luxury hotel that caught fire on New Year's Eve did nothing to do the flames. The authorities are now trying to find out what really happened. In the address downtown hotel, the morning after the building had become the stuff of disaster movies. Firefighters said they battled all night trying to tackle the blaze. Authorities said the 16 injuries suffered were all related to the stampede that ensued when the fire broke out on New Year's Eve. They believe it started on the outside of the building on the 20th floor, but remain unsure of the exact cause. The fire spread quickly to engulf much of the 63-story building. People inside said there were grave safety problems. I'm still in shock. There are no, um, the sprinklers didn't come out. There are no sprinklers. There's no fire alarm. Despite the huge fire, only about a kilometer away, Dubai authorities went ahead with New Year's Eve celebrations, including a massive fireworks display at the world's tallest skyscraper, the Burj Khalifa. We take our second break now. Stay tuned. Welcome back, and before we take leave of you, a recap of the day's main stories. Keeping with tradition, Operation Save the Children's Foundation, spearheaded by First Lady Madam Zainab Yaya Jame, has presented a hefty financial package and gifts to the New Year babies delivered at three hospitals in Banjul and the Kanifin municipality. Trafficking in persons or modern day slavery has come under the spotlight as officials work towards sensitizing the people to be extra vigilant. 
Ukraine is looking set to take advantage of a new comprehensive free trade agreement with the European Union, but Russia is not moved. And investigators are trying to dig deep into the circumstances leading to the cause of a blaze at a luxury hotel in Dubai on New Year's Eve. Well, that was all in this edition of the News at 10. From me, Winifred Nicol, and the entire news team, Happy New Year. Good night.